Back this Sunday morning with candidates who would like to be the next mayor of Knoxville. John. Gentlemen, last week WBIR broke the story about uh, some questions, some significant questions regarding conduct within the police department related to um, at least one uh, sergeant and maybe some other administrators. And you all have already sort of talked about uh, recruiting, numbers being down. It raises a lot of questions, this issue of what's going on within the department, and is it such a great place that people would want to work? So I would like to hear from you all in terms of uh, if the news about this video that this sergeant was uh, depicted on, engaging in some pretty vulgar behavior, is mm -hmm. uh, something how you deal with that. Uh, the police chief will be working for whoever becomes the mayor and whether what kind of an impact they may, that might be having on recruitment and bringing people in and how people perceive the department. Marshall, we'll start with you. Yeah, no, it's totally unacceptable and we have to have a zero tolerance policy for that type of hostile work environment and uh, you know and you know I don't think it's it's pervasive but I think we need to look into that and if it is I think we need to we need an outside investigation because it is very serious and uh, you know we need to be doing more to recruit and uh, recruit females and this type of behavior obviously is counterproductive to that. You know, Timing is not good. The timing was not good. Right. And, you know, I'm sh and I don't think Chief Thomas, uh, you know, the first uh, female police chief, I don't think sh this is the kind of culture at all she wants in her police department. But going back to the precinct model, this is the challenge. You know, you start to get different precincts. You, it makes it management difficult because you have different little fiefdoms all across the city. Too dispersed. Right. And so, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, we need to zero tolerance for that type of behavior. And, you know, I'm confident that Chief Thomas will, will find and root it out. Mr. Skinner, what do you think? Well, first of all, I need to acknowledge those hardworking police officers who do uh, the right thing. But this certainly highlights that there is a cultural uh, change and shift that needs to take place. Uh, when your ranks, your leadership are behaving in this way, they're supposed to be the model uh, for other officers. Um, this speaks volumes. And again, I, I suspect that if we analyze, if we uh, did the assessment, I'm sure we could find other matters. Because again, what's glaring to me is the fact that we have not done well with representation. We have not done rep well with representation of women, of people of color, black, brown. If we uh, look at even the cadets now, I would wonder, I would question, what does the representation look like there? Uh, coming from Philadelphia, where actually they had uh, uh, big controversy uh, centered around their officers, uh, the police chief took a hard stand. And of course, uh, you know, even with that city being a union city, there was a, a lot of, you know, backbiting and issues with that. But nevertheless, he took a stand because he did what was right. And this city needs to be a model city to all the world. Because right now it's embarrassing even nationally what's going on here in Knoxville. Eddie. Yes, <clears throat> I think Chief Thomas has done an amazing job, and, and I think it's uh, the, that, that, I mean, that behavior would not be tolerated in my administration, not for one second. But I hope that we understand that it's not indicative of the entire police department. I will go back and say that <clears throat> police precincts, if you really look at this, Chief Thomas is responsible, and the person at the top is always responsible. But in the models that we have studied, the precincts have individual captains in the precincts that d really serve as the chief of police in those precincts. So they're directly supervising a much smaller group of individuals. And from what I understand and from what I've heard of the models across the country, that <clears throat> the behavior is better, it's easier to control in a smaller environment than in a larger environment. And, and when I talk about precincts also, I want to make sure that this is not misunderstood. I really i am not talking about building new buildings. I'm talking about going into the communities and looking for buildings that have been, you know, vacant for maybe a year or two and really locating the police precincts there. But I think management is much better in the precinct model. Great rhetoric from all three of you. We don't pay anybody any money. We train you. You go to Oak Ridge. You go to Maryville. Right. You go somewhere else. We can't get a full class of recruits in the city of Knoxville for the training academy. We haven't had a full class in a long time. How are you guys going to pay for it? You can't tell me all of this rosy picture. And tell me how you're going to get the money, Eddie. Where is it going to come from, Mr. Skinner? Where is it going to come from, Marshall? Because you don't pay them. 
Now, even, he, I, and I have to give you a disclaimer. I've been a lawyer for the FOP and the Southern right. States Police Benevolent Association for 40 plus years. We're starving guys and women to death who are busting their butts, and you're talking about something that not paying them. On that question, we've got about a minute, so let's get through this quickly. Marshall, uh, do you increase their salaries? I recently voted to. You know, I think we've got to do all we can. It's a good question, but obviously the challenge is, you know, our budget's Up limited. to 40, right? Up. Starting is 40 now, 40K? Right. We, we, we raised the starting pay to address this. We're, we're taking action and, you know, to get the pay up to make sure we're attracting and recruiting uh, qualified officers. Mr. Skinner, is that enough? The, we, the interesting thing is when we want to pay for something, we find the money. If we want good officers, especially, again, I must emphasize, uh, represent, representative of our community, fully representative, we can find the money and ensure that we're creating a culture that every officer feels included and thriving. Eddie? Yeah, one of the very first things that I talked about when I kicked my campaign off was that our, the starting salary for police officers was way too low. I wouldn't do it. None, very few people would do that. And I am in total support of raising the starting pay as has been being done in the budget. But also, it's just the starting pay that's being raised. It's not going across the board. So not every police officer is getting an increase that's relative to the starting pay. And it is about efficiency, Dennis. I mean, I think that from a business standpoint, we can all talk about we're going to do this and we're going to do this. But how do we really get that? So it is about running an efficient government. All right. We're going to take another quick break. Our last block on Inside Tennessee right after this.